Welcome to all the classic car enthusiasts. Um, so this will be part three of the rotisserie modification. Um, the actual rotisserie itself is basically the same I've used for all my jobs. Um, but obviously the frame and the way it fits to the Mini, uh, or, or any car for that matter, is slightly different. Um, and as you know, I have another two projects to do. So I want to make this frame so it's kind of... Um, uh, good for, for anything, for any eventuality that if I have to uh, completely put a new floor in with a heel board or whatever I can actually do everything with it at, at the same time. Uh, what I don't want to be doing is, is refabbing stuff up if I can help it. I did get some so quite a few comments on this last one on the part two that I did and I got a couple of comments saying um, that it was kind of um, pretty heavy duty and, and that's very true. Uh, the steel I'm using, I'm very fortunate where I live, um, we have a neighbour, he has a, a big business, a scrap business, but he sells brand new steel for just basically its weight, so whether it's tubular, rectangular, uh, box section, he, he sells it just for its pure weight, but it's brand spanking new, he gets it from people who have finished with it or companies that have gone bust, whatever. Um, so uh, the all the parts I bought yesterday, this was the main uh, uh, bar going through the angle iron, some box section, there was five or six big sections and I think I paid 24 euro or something, so 22 quid, uh, which is really not a lot of money. So if you're lucky enough to have a scrapyard or, or a place where you can get this stuff, that's great. Um, yeah, so it possibly is, <laughs> and it possibly is quite heavily over-engineered, but my feeling with this is, is I would think say it's better to err on the side of caution than it is to under-engineer it, if that's the right phrase to use, or not weld it correctly, or, or, or um, it, it to be unsafe. It's better to be much safer. The other thing that's come up quite a bit is, is that you know people talk about balancing the shaft uh, or where you're, you're rotating it. This is handy if you're on your own to rotate the vehicle. But you know you have to remember that this that the shell is not being rotated 20, 30 times a day or at speed or anything like that. So the balance is really not that important. It is obviously for doing it if you're on your own um, to a certain extent. But at the end of the day, uh, it should be a workable height, and and uh, and that's more important than getting everything uh, square and balanced and all the rest of it. This, this idea that I can spin the car around quickly is nonsense because you wouldn't be doing that you'd be as long as it supports uh, when it's when it's uh, uh, upright or it's upside down or it's on either side or at any angle as long as it's being supported that's the most important thing and you're not saying you're not rotating this at any speed anyway so that's not important so I want to give um, a couple of quick shout outs um, uh, the video I'm going to do now um, a lot of it's going to be um, towards um, uh, Randy Ullman, this is uh, his, he's got a new site and it's called Lone Star Mini, he's in Texas and he's got three minis, um, the one he's working on at the moment which he's got on a jig and he's talking about now replacing the whole floor pan, uh, not in sections but a complete floor pan which is quite a big uh, deal, so I'm going to go over a couple of things for you Randy in that and for anybody else that's, that's, that's doing this. So going back to this uh, fabrication, the reason I've gone for such a heavy uh, steel um, box section is I don't want any movement in the car because the problem, I've said this many times before to the point of being boring, is if you're pivoting or if you're, if you're holding the, the rear bulkhead and the front bulkhead and you start taking pieces out of the centre, uh, any monocoque car is going to be a problem. And, with, and particularly with a Mini because it's ribbed and it's not got chassis legs in it to hold its, its strength in the bottom. So you take the floor out, you're now cause, going to cause a lot of problems. It's got a bit of weight sitting out, even though they don't weigh very much. Um, and particularly when you're turning, you're turning the car over, you're putting it through stresses and strains if it's not correct. So I'd rather err on the side of caution and go a bit beefier. And like I was saying, I want to be able to use it as a, a pickup point for floors or whatever it is I might be doing at the time. And this is the reason that I'm doing it, but I'm making it detachable. Now, uh, Lone Star Mini, Randy, uh, I'm writing him an email back now and talking to him about replacing the floor. 
if, if you're going to replace the whole floor, you still need to brace it inside. But what I would say about bracing is try and make it so it's boltable or uh, it's adjustable or whatever. Um, if you start welding pieces in, box sections in, that's fine. But I can guarantee you what will happen is, is these box sections will be in your way when you go to go welding. Um, it's a fact of, of making something. If you can make it in such a way that you can, as you're making it, you can get the gun in to do the welding, then fine. But if you make it so it's detachable, or a sections of it are detachable, you can unbolt it, do what you need to do, and pop it back in. That's It takes longer, but that's probably the way to go. Anyway, um, so I wanted to do, a, as I said, shout out to Lone Star Mini. It's a new uh, channel. Uh, uh, it's first time he's worked on Mini. He's got three of them. Um, and, and the other one is Piper Doug, because he's just doing a t-shirt thing. I, I think he's just over the 200 now that he wanted to do. But there are so many guys out there. I mean, there are, we've got Total Car Reviews, Lone Star Mini, Essex Mini, Mini Tom, Keith Miller, DB Mini. There's another one called Hipstar. I don't know the chap's name, Scott's fellow, very cool guy who's doing a Mini, Hipstar. Um, who else we've got? We've got uh, Piper Doug, Paul P. I'm just going through some of them here. Paul P, Mini Build, Adam Campion, Josh Smith, uh, Sean C., uh, who else we've got? We've got um, Mini Doby, uh, Mini Man Shed, Mini Matt TV, the Gentleman's Racing Team, the DGSC, Simon Ayton in Austria in Australia, um, uh, Classic Mini DIY, uh, well, Dave's Vlog is another one, um, Mini Mad Vlogger, Mini Madness, um, Bad Obsession Motorsport, which is the dog's nuts. Um, yeah, George Knapp, uh, uh, Tim the Spanner Man, Team Stockdale, um, uh, who else we've got? Oh, classic, uh, classic Mini Maintenance. There's so many of them to watch out there. So, I'm, all I'm trying to do is give you the, the, the basics, and it's just a bit of info sharing. I mean, this, this is why I do it. I don't uh, do it to make money off it or to, I don't know, whatever. It's, it's to try and get information, so the idea is we all share with each other. So I hope you enjoy the video and catch you soon. You can see I've made uh, this section up. I was going to try and use both of these, but I've realised that I would probably keep the bar in all the time anyway, so I'm going to chop this off when I go to weld everything up. Um, when I take it all out and, and seam weld everything and clean it and, and paint it, so I'll chop this off. So I've used this original one, and what I've done is, is I've cut it up, and extended it because obviously trying to find a piece of bar that's elongated or, or a box section that's elongated or fit over that is impossible because the next size up is is got a huge tolerance on it. That would have been the ideal thing to just put a box section onto that and slide it over before you nip it all up. Um, but I had to actually make this leg so I had to heat it and bend it. What will happen now is I'll put a uh, bolt right through here so this can be slid backwards and forwards as well and then just tightened up so when it's upside down it will sit against the clamp and when it's right way up it will sit against this piece. Um, what I'll do is I'll pick the camera up now and I'll give you a, a close up of it so you can see it. And now basically what I'll do is put uh, a second bar in here and put the two um, angle brackets or the two angle iron brackets in here with the two bolts through it, the same as on the front, basically the same thing. So I won't bore you with the details on that and re-drilling. I'll just get it all done and then I'll show you the finished product. But I'll quickly do um, a handheld shot so you can see it. Okay, so this might give you a little better uh, close-up of how it's going to look. So you can see there it's the same bracket. You can see the extension legs are sticking down. I'll just put a bolt right through this bottom piece and this uh, tubular I'll cut off because we don't actually need that. Um, what I can see again is there's a slight bow in that. Obviously this strip is much too, uh, is much too short or not wide enough. So what I'll do is, is I'll use these same uh, bolt hole sizes and I'll make a, a larger plate to go under and uh, over so it sandwiches um, a bigger surface area because I need it closer towards the back where the seam is here at the back here and, and closer to the front where it's got an upright to it and it's stronger. This piece in the centre you can see it's bowing so this is really important this is all the weight of the car is sitting on it. Um, 
So I'm going to make a much bigger plate up for that, so it's the same shape basically. Uh, getting it lined up is not going to be easy, but it's a, it's a job that needs to be done. And obviously you want to try and use the holes you've already got rather than drill extra ones. So uh, that's it, so I've mocked it up. What I'm going to do now is um, go up, I'm going to re-weld this underneath to make sure it's strong around the, where it sits on the bar, uh, beef it up a bit and uh, drill two holes in it and then I'll make these angle lines on the side. So we'll see how we get them by the end of the day. Catch you in the next, uh, the next part. So as you can see, um, I've got the two pieces of angle iron cut, I've got the two supports in, again they're only tacked in. Um, I'll take, when I um, get it all finished, I'll take it out and, as I said, seam weld everything. So what I'll do now is I'll take these up and drill them out with the same two bolt holes that I had before and again I rounded them up. I'll do that one on the front when we get finished. Um, and you can see here, I've made a bar here at the top. This is a 3.3 centimeter uh, box section. And, what that's, and that's 90 centimeters long. So what I'm going to do is, is put this bar, this thin bar I have here, I'll, I'll put the holes in the same position, just put longer bolts through, and that rigidity of that box section will make that parcel short because it's almost the length of the car or the width of the car. Uh, it should strengthen that up completely. <coughs> um, and then I can cut some of the excess bits off. I'll also jack up the car now, take this piece up. I've marked it, and uh, uh, what I'll do now is I'll, I'll lift it up. And, uh, and take the weight off it. You can see how the weight's off in there. What I've got to do is undo these bolts, take it up with me, I'll take this section up, drill that, and then hopefully uh, finish it off in the morning. Um, and uh, then I get everything welded up, ready for uh, cleaning it down, puff it all down and then we'll paint it. Um, it'll get covered in primer and everything else, but um, the, you know, the problem with welds is, is they rust very, very quickly, as everybody knows. So, um, yeah, that's it for today. Um, I'd say I'll take all this out now. Um, Take all these parts out, repair them up in the or, or drill them, do what I have to do, and and then the final finishing off tomorrow, and that should be it. Um, so it will be a part four, I'm afraid. So as usual, stay safe, keep the faith, enjoy your hobby.